If you have a wood stove installed anywhere near a wall in your home, like most people do, in my opinion, you should have a properly installed heat shield, similar to something like I have here. My name is Terry with Everything Homestead. Today, I'm going to go over what I did, as you see behind me here, for a heat shield for my home. Now, first off, you need to keep in mind the manufacturer's recommendations for the wood stove that you have as far as spacing from combustible materials. Also, there may be some local building codes that you need to follow, insurance uh, codes, recommendations you should follow. Definitely check into those before you go make an investment in anything. You can go and buy some pre-made uh, fired shields uh, that are probably three foot by four foot square panels that you can install. Uh, it's not as simple as you may think uh, to just buy it and set it behind your stove. I see some people that do that and it's actually kind of dangerous just to haphazardly set it in behind the stove without properly installing it. The main goal is to not burn your house down. I mean, it sounds stupid, but it's a very serious thing you need to take in consideration. I like to go to sleep at night with the peace of mind knowing that my house won't burn down from something as silly as not planning a proper heat shield around my stove. Let me give you a closer look as to uh, how I constructed this, what materials I used, and the concepts behind it all. Okay, first off, we need to understand the concept of this heat shield. Uh, the one I have here is a little bit more than the usual heat shield, but for the location of my home, I have this wood stove set in the corner of the room. I wanted to, number one, keep the walls safe from catching on fire. And number two, just aesthetically, I didn't want to just make a, a section right behind the stove in the corner and leave it at that. Aesthetically, I just wanted to extend it out to incorporate the area where the wood stack is. Now, when you are making a barrier for this heat, you're making a barrier that will reflect and or soak up the heat before it gets to the combustible materials in your wall. Two by fours in your wall, insulation in your wall can all catch on fire. One of the main things with any heat barrier is that there needs to be airflow on all four sides behind the barrier. So I'll show you here. If you go over to the side here, you can see I have a one inch barrier between the heat shield and the sheetrock so the air can flow between there. It can go up through the top and it can also go down through the bottom. Let's see if I can get a better shot here. If you see down at the bottom there, I have, I think it's an inch and a quarter off the floor airspace. So the air has the opportunity to go underneath, up behind, and heat rises out the top. Sorry about the focus there. So all four sides, the heat, heat can go any direction around there. And that helps keep the air moving back there. It keeps the hot points away from the stove area, flowing around the room and off the sheetrock, off the two by fours. I just built this right over the top of my existing sheetrock. And uh, what I did was I took these are porcelain tiles. They seem to do a better job with the heat reflection and uh, stand up a little better than uh, a ceramic tile. These are actual tiles. They are made to look like strips of wood, but they are tile. I put them on sheets of uh, cement board. The cement board is fire resistant, another product there. And I'll show you on the back here or in between this wall, and I'll turn my flashlight on here. I took little chunks of the cement board, made little squares, doubled them up, which creates my one inch space, you know, between the sheetrock and my board for my airflow to go through there. I put each one on each stud, so I have 16 inches on center all the way across and I put them because of the weight of all this 
the tiles are really heavy, the cement board is really heavy. I put one screw every approximately eight inches vertically, every 16 inches left to right. It's a very heavy board. I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to move. In addition to that, I also put, oh, we look back here again, you can see I put some little pieces of brick underneath the wall, just as little belt and suspenders to make sure if it did decide to start sagging down, that was going to help hold it up in addition to all those screws. Now you want to make sure when you're doing this that each screw that you put in is a possible entryway of heat to go from the stove through all this, through the screw itself and into the wood stud on the other side. So what the recommendation is, where the stove is up against the wall, you don't put any screws in that area. That will prevent that from being an issue. So you put a lot of screws in up and around, but nothing right there where the heat can possibly transfer through the screw itself and cause a fire. This wall I have here has been installed now for, I think four years now, and it's been holding up really well. You would think that you'd be seeing some cracks and settling and stuff, but it has, that's not the case. Now for my spacers here, I just used the cement board pieces to make the spacers because it's a very poor conductor of heat. Now you can go to the hardware store and get some metal bushings, but that would be kind of silly to do because those metal bushings, if you use them, uh, they transfer heat uh, perfectly to the studs of your house to get your house on fire. So even the spacers that you use, whether it's a spacer like I did here, or if you're gonna get a panel, a pre-made panel from whatever uh, website you should find, you still need to put spacers behind there that are uh, non-combustible and low transmittability of heat. Whatever you find, that's what you gotta use. Now one reason I went up, I went up about six feet in height for this. One of the reasons I went up to that height is you also have to take in consideration this is a heat source as well. That gets really hot and you got to make sure or that could actually set things on fire too if you get too close to that. So that's one of the reasons why I went up as high as I did. Now it drives me a little crazy when I see some of these channels where people have their wood stoves go on and they just have, they just take a a sheet of sheet metal and they just drape it up they lean it up against the wall back here and they call it good you know they're being safe well you got to think about that's right on a, a wood wall or a wood studded wall that can catch on fire they seem to think that they're safe because well it's it's leaning up against the wall up here so you know that's away from the heat source down here well as an example when if you were to cook something on the stove with this skillet the heat is you know heat it, the heat is technically just in contact with the bottom of the pan but the heat comes up through the metal and this is obvious information but you wouldn't even want to touch this handle because the heat comes up through there transmits through the whole pan out to the handle it's just as hot everywhere in this pan well the same would be true if you put a piece of sheet metal back there it's absorbing that heat and where it's touching the wall up here where you lean it up against the wall back there you're going to start your house on fire Another thing I see in some people, what they do is they'll put a wood stove right up next to any particular kind of wall and they'll call it, if it's a brick wall, hey, I'm good, that's made out of brick, that ain't gonna burn. Well, those bricks, unless you have an air gap behind the brick, those bricks are up against wood studs. The bricks soak up the heat, transfer it through to the wood. You're just as likely to catch on fire even if you have a brick surround around your wood stove, you still need an air gap on all four sides to be safe. If you don't, you're, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if, if that was a situation. Some people think, you know, well, that brick won't catch on fire. I'm safe. Well, their house is going to probably catch on fire. No wonder what happened. Now, one of the best advantages to having a heat shield to me was it frees up floor space because if you have a properly installed heat shield, you can usually reduce the spacing required from combustible materials by at least half. 
So in this case here, by the stove's recommended spacings, right now I have the stove right here. If I didn't have a heat shield, the spacing would require me to put the stove right about here. And that takes up a ton of floor space in this room, which really isn't that big to begin with. It also creates an issue with the chimney install, because if it's way over here, I gotta figure out how to get the pipe at a funny angle over the wall, because that part of the wall right there is the only place I could go out according to the building structure I have to deal with. So by being able to use this heat shield, this particular higher efficiency wood stove also gives me some uh, the ability to be closer to the wall. Between all that, I can tuck it back in this corner and it's completely safe. Now with this particular Vogel Zhang wood stove, I've been really impressed since I put it in. This is my second wood stove since I've installed this heat shield. But when this thing is at its hottest, I can go to the closest point, put my hand on this tile, and it's not too hot to the touch. I can hold my hand right on the tile. So that makes me feel better that this stove is, is amazingly great for being close to combustible materials. I'm not worried it's gonna catch any on fire if I could hold my hand in that tile on the front or the back. And so with the airflow behind there, uh, that helps dissipate the heat from the tile. It keeps everything nice and cool as it should be, and there's no fire hazard. I can sleep better at night.